Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another ZD Toys Spider-Man figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are taking a look at Spidey in his upgraded suit from No Way Home. Now it turns out this line has been a little hit and miss. The black and gold suit had good proportions and decent articulation but he was too tall and also super inaccurate to the movie. The same thing can be said for the integrated suit but I guess I'm a glutton for punishment, cause here we go with the third figure in the line. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, I really like it. It fits right in line with the rest of the line. Up top, Spider-Man No Way Home. Down below, Spider-Man Upgraded Suit. Then front and center, a high gloss image of Spidey. On the side of the box, Spider-Man Upgraded Suit. On the back, a bunch of product shots, plus the warnings and legal info. Now, if we flip open the front cover, we are treated to the figure inside. Now, I had really high hopes for this line to begin with, but the black suit let me down, and the integrated suit only doubled down on that. It was even more disappointing. But first in hand impressions for this guy, yeah, he doesn't look all that terrible. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look and everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, I love this base, the hexagonal bottom, we've got this red kind of web pattern over a New York City skyline, Spider-Man No Way Home, then up top a multi-jointed flight pole arm and a spring-loaded waist clamp. We do also get some web effects and before we address the color, I like the sculpt and I like the sizes. We've got one long one, one shorter one, it looks kind of dynamic like it's not just one straight line, there is texture here and the end is a little bit thicker. I do also like the way they peg into the palms, it's a convincing effect, but blue? Seriously? ZD Toys, once again you'll have used blue. You could have gone translucent, you could have painted them white, but blue is never the answer for Spidey's webs. Then lastly we have the usual suspects for hands, the whipping hands with and without the holes, then some kind of weird splayed out finger hands. Whose hands ever look like this? I'm pretty sure the fingers are supposed to point downwards, kind of like a spider getting ready to pounce, but no, no, they've gone with this right here. Also, if you look closely, the paint is the same, but the detail isn't. These hands have some sculpted in web lines, but these ones don't. They're fully smooth and textured. What the heck is going on with the hands? I have no idea. ZD Toys doesn't seem to either. That's why this line is a bit of a hot mess. What we are going to do now though is get upgraded suit Spidey himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Yeah, ZD Toys, you really can't catch a break when it comes to Spidey. Your integrated suit was just okay, it was metallic red for some weird reason, black and gold suit was completely inaccurate, and then we have this guy. Technically, it should have been sold as a far from home upgraded suit, because that belt area is completely wrong, but in saying that, the proportions are good. It looks like Spidey from the films, the proportions and the sculpt and the texture and the detail, it comes together pretty well. Does that mean he's perfect? Oh no, far from it. I don't love the fact that some of the paint is sloppy. And the stupid shoulder pads, why do they stick out as much as they do? I don't know how this design for a shoulder pad for Spider-Man, someone who wears a fabric suit, got past the R&D phase, it never should have happened. I don't know if they're going to make more Spidey figures going forward, but for me, this design, it kind of feels like a beta test, almost like it's unfinished. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the head sculpt first. Yeah, ZD Toys, this ain't it. I don't know what reference material y'all were looking at, but from the front, it looks super goofy. I don't know if the eyes are too big, too angled, or too close together, or maybe a combination of all three, but from the side, it looks great. From the front, though, it looks really ugly. The texture for the mask is good. 
I like that the web lines are all fully painted and the crisp white for the eyes. Plus, the overall shape is in proportion to the rest of the body. It's just the way those eyes look from the front, which, as I said, look kinda goofy. One of my biggest carryover complaints between all three ZD Toy Spidey figures is this design right here. I hate it. It makes it look like Spidey's wearing some kind of suit of armor with these shoulder pads. They stick out down below and they stick out up the top too. When he's literally just standing there, okay, he looks a little bit more seamless and the proportions are excellent. But when you start to move the arms, that illusion is broken immediately. Plus, the joint on mine is super loose and flimsy. Around the back, we've got this massive white Spidey logo. I really like that. You also have some gunmetal panel lines, which... Are they supposed to be gunmetal? Am I misremembering? Because I don't think they are. But I also kind of like the way they look. They catch the light and they pop really nicely. Now around the front we've got the smaller Spidey symbol fully painted, but missing the white outline. I don't know why. Usually ZD toys are really good with their paint, but here I've got some overspray on the side and the paint does look a little bit more shabby compared to their usual efforts. Coming down to the legs, I don't want to bore you by saying there's a ton of texture over and over again, so I won't. There's a lot to look at. They've got panel lines and detail. Down here for the boots, they're done in red with the web lines fully painted. And you've got some more gunmetal up top. Then the treads underneath aren't sculpted, but they are at the very least a different color to the rest of the boots. Now, initially I thought, oh, okay, the red sections are all unpainted plastic. No, no, they're all fully painted in red. So maybe they ran out of paint budget with the gunmetal and the red sections so they couldn't do the white area around the spider. Either way, I kind of wish that was there. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the upgraded suit Spidey on the left by ZD Toys and the Marvel Legends version on the right. Marvel Legends is a lot smaller. We've come to expect that ZD Toys do run a little large in scale. I prefer the proportions, the suit texture, and the colors on ZD Toys, but with Hasbro, I prefer the articulation and I love the fact that you get that unmasked head sculpt. Whereas with ZD Toys, he's pretty light on when it comes to accessories. Now, in terms of accuracy to the movie, both look okay. The Hasbro one has the white outline for the spider, and he's missing the belt, which is accurate versus the ZD Toys figure that has those black panels that really aren't supposed to be there. Next up, here we have the Mark 43, also by ZD Toys, and... This is all kinds of wrong. Spidey shouldn't be as tall as Iron Man, in fact, he's actually a little bit taller here. Plus, his head is physically larger than Tony's helmet. That shouldn't be the case. I don't know what's going on with the scaling. ZD Toys, going forward, get your scaling right. This looks completely ridiculous. Spidey should be quite a lot shorter than he is here. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Starting off with the head sculpt first though, ball joint at the base of the head and another at the base of the neck. Looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms do extend out and so too do the shoulder pads, going up to there, going forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow that gets you past 90, and of course a ball joint for the wrist peg. The torso extends up at two different sections, going forward to there, going back to there, swivel as well as pivots. The legs do drop down just a little, going forward, going out, swivel at the upper thigh, Double bend at the knee that gets you just past 90, plus a double ball peg for the ankle, and of course, toe articulation. Wrapping up on ZD Toys upgraded suit Spidey, this was the one that I was super excited about. I thought, if anything, ZD Toys will nail the simple costume, this will save the line for me. Maybe that was a little unfair to pin all my hopes and dreams for the line on this one figure, because yeah, he falls a little, in fact, no, he falls a lot short. Starting off with the belt area, it's wrong. It's accurate to far from home, not no way home, 
Why did that get through the design phase? I don't know. The same thing can be said for the shoulder pads. They are really, really ugly. Fingers crossed, going forward, ZD Toys never uses this shoulder pad design again. Let me know if it works for you, because it definitely doesn't work for me. The paint is a little bit sloppy here. I don't like the head sculpt. The eyes are too close together, or maybe they're too big. And the figure itself is too big. He shouldn't be as tall as Iron Man, yet he's even taller. They're from the same line, but they are completely out of scale. Does that mean the figure is terrible? Well, that's going to be down to you. I still like the sculpt, I like the texture, and I like the proportions. But all of those things aren't good enough to save this figure. If I saw this one on the shelf, and I had the option to pick up one of the other versions from different companies, yeah, I'd probably leave this one on that shelf. Nevertheless, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.